The South African Social Security Agency has made a decisive move in a bid to completely take over the payment of social grants. This as the agency successfully ran a pilot project that saw 100 beneficiaries who bank with commercial banks being paid directly by SASA. To tell us a bit more about the initiative, we are joined by the Minister of Social Development, Ms. Patabile Tlamini. A very good morning to you, Minister. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. Thank you. Now, ma'am, the clock is ticking less than three months. The SAS says a Concord deadline expires. Do you believe the department can actually meet that deadline to completely take over? Um, we believe we can start with the process and we will be starting with the phase in, phase out on the first. But there are other processes that a uh, have been started and uh, right now we are trying to pilot them. For instance, the one of a hundred uh, beneficiaries that we pay directly mm -hmm. as SASA and uh, those were paid uh, through the service provider. They are two million. They have already been receiving their grants from banks. So the money would start uh, from the fiscus to another bank to the service provider. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a lot of challenges uh, through that. The issues of the abuse of our database, the issues of not being able at the end of the month to come up with a total amount uh, that we used, but also we could not be able to detect the interest that uh, the, get, the bank gets in the process. Mm -hmm. So now the 100 uh, has uh, been paid and they were paid even uh, before the first of uh, this month because first we thought it was going to be a problem because uh, it was a holiday. So they already have uh, their money and we're going to do this uh, in a phased manner. On the 1st of February, we're paying all people that have been getting their money through the service providers bank. Mm -hmm. Now the money will be coming from SASA and will be able uh, to detect all uh, the challenges fa uh, that uh, have been facing us uh, in the process. So Minister, that means that in your words, uh, the, the, the 100 sample was actually a success, right? Uh, what The challenges that you mentioned, how can those challenges actually be dealt with? The issue of the abuse of database, you know, and, and other things that you just mentioned. I think uh, that's a base. The Constitutional Court was very clear that it must come uh, to SASA. And we are towards the end of uh, transferring the database. And we have uh, agreed uh, with the post office that they are going to store our information. And uh, we are also going to be able to deal with the one too many program for children because home affairs does not uh, have the biometrics for children and we do have a biometrics for the children so we think uh, we are moving forward and we are working with uh, all the stakeholders mm -hmm. and we want to say that uh, this is a huge uh, success more particularly because government is going to gain or claw back some money that uh, has been going through all uh, these processes and more particularly the government uh, interest and also understanding what is happening in the grants of the uh, beneficiaries. Minister, give us a bit more information regarding the plan to insource all the social grants payments. You mentioned briefly that the post office has a role to play, uh, that there will be the ones storing the database. What other role does the post office have and other stakeholders in this complete insourcing? Okay, Let, let's, let's say that um, one 
we are going to be working uh, together with the post office in the first phase of the payment of uh, social grants from a uh, CPS. And then our phase two is a hybrid model. The hybrid model is going to be banks and we are going to be working with the NYDA to try and ensure that uh, young people in townships, rural areas, and uh, those that uh, have uh, shops, the uh, restaurants, spaza shops, are going also uh, to be paying uh, grants. We're going to be working uh, with uh, them. Uh, they, it's not going to be uh, only the banks. Mm -hmm. Hybrid, uh, we've already been uh, using hybrid because uh, our people have been getting their money from the banks. Two million. And uh, two, there are those that uh, have been uh, getting their money from uh, various shops. But now we are saying we must go to where our people are so that uh, the money rotates where it is used. It must not uh, remain uh, in town. Because if people get uh, money from the banks only, it means uh, it's only uh, banks that are going to benefit from this not a uh, people where the money uh, is going. In the actual communities. Now, Minister, can you also and, explain? And uh, the third uh, one is the development of Sasa in sourcing uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The first year is a phase in, phase out. The second year to third year is the hybrid model. And the fourth to fifth year is the development of a the infrastructure and some of the infrastructure would be developed by the post office and some will be bought directly through a SASA processes. Now, Minister, just coming back to this deal that was signed between SASA and the post office, what are some of the details you can give us about that deal? And why was SASA seemingly reluctant to actually sign this deal at first? There was a delay, deadlines had to be pushed a bit forward in the signing of the deal. There, there wasn't a, actually a, a big a delay. A, firstly, we had to do due diligence in the post office. And CSIR did that. And uh, when the matter went back uh, to the portfolio committee, they, there was a feeling that uh, the post office was uh, not uh, treated uh, favorably. And then uh, the treasury had uh, to intervene, evaluate a uh, the report, and uh, there were a number of things that uh, we looked into and then agreed we are going to be working with the post office. Mm -hmm. So it, it was because all the processes we had uh, to go through, we never uh, refused uh, to work with the post office. Actually, this is the decision of the African National Congress, the issue of the post office and the state bank. And therefore, it was a mandate. It's not an invention uh, of uh, someone who was sitting there at the corner. Number two, starting uh, from the committee that was set uh, up by Minister Mulewa, the post office has been uh, coming up because we also want uh, to ensure that uh, we build it because there is a economic activity around the post office and it is a spread throughout the country. So there is work mm -hmm. that we were already doing. The advisory committee and even the technical committees that were looking into our work had a role for the post office. And therefore it, it, it's not true that uh, we were refusing to sign, but we had to ensure that uh, 
we follow proper processes. And because we don't want it to make a mistake, right now, we, we might all be shouting and uh, saying we've not been able to do our work. This is not a easy work. It is a lot uh, of work that has been done uh, by SASA officials that are committed and we, that we need uh, to comment. And uh, saying things without a proper confirmation is going to destroy the very institution that a government created to, de to defend the poor, to ensure that there is social solidarity in our country that uh, looks into those that uh, are poor and cannot uh, afford or cannot uh, put a plate of food on the table on a daily basis. Now, Minister, looking at the year 2018 and what it has in store, you are actually facing a court-appointed inquiry into your personal liability for the social grants debacle. What are your main defence points? Okay, let's, uh, we'll go there, present uh, our case. Uh, we've uh, prepared uh, and we have uh, submitted part A uh, of the work that uh, we were doing. And uh, people are going to see when uh, we started uh, with the process, mm -hmm. when uh, we started uh, introducing the new leadership into the system. And uh, what happened when uh, we wanted uh, to make a submission to court in uh, December that year, so uh, we're all going to see uh, how uh, things have been uh, unfolding. And the advisory committee was appointed to do the work. The technical teams were appointed to do the work. And the, the advisory committee reported and said there were areas that were very important. Banking, IT, local uh, economic development, communication, and uh, the legal uh, framework. Those were the areas that were identified as very uh, important. And they have been looking into options for SASA and not uh, doing the work for SASA. Mm -hmm. But one other thing that happened was that they had to report directly to me. Why? Because we saw that during the process of the advisory committee, there was a lot of gatekeeping. And we all know, if there is gatekeeping at work, you need to find other ways that are going to ensure that the plan of government is implemented. But one other thing that uh, I think we should uh, congratulate the president about is the formation of the IMC on comprehensive social security and also the bringing into the IMC the issues of the social grant uh, payment. It has made a huge uh, difference because this work is not for social development only. It's government work. It's the work of the society. Because one day, if uh, we, we, on the first of the month, vulnerable people do not get uh, their, their, their grants, we will have a problem in the country. A very big problem at that and a very big one. You know, you mentioned um, a, a earlier on that there was criticism, you know, uh, on the Department of Social Development last year. A lot of it came in 2017. How much of that criticism was actually justified? Okay, I, I think the issue of us not reporting on time to the Constitutional Court was justified. 
but also there are things that were happening behind the scenes that uh, were the cause of that uh, challenge. I, I, I don't want to preempt uh, the process mm -hmm. because there are letters actually that uh, came to us to say it is time to report to the Constitutional Court, but I was never informed uh, about uh, those letters. I, it's, you receive a letter from uh, the court, you need, a, I know that uh, you have to run and you have to account, and more particularly if it is about uh, the poor, because we've always uh, ensured that we take our work very seriously, and we have uh, been able to do that. And starting uh, from the biometrics, we did uh, our work with excellence. Though we extended with six months, but also that taught us a lesson. We saw that uh, the work of uh, the vulnerable does not have to be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down and plan properly. And that is why you have the advisory committee, so that uh, you do your work properly. So as you mentioned before, Minister, this actually was quite a mammoth task, a bit bigger than you might have initially planned. What are some of the most urgent concerns that you have as this deadline is approaching? I think uh, the first concern is a uh, phase in, phase out, because if we don't uh, do that, people will think uh, we are playing. And uh, secondly, whoever is given the task of working with us must ensure that the buck stops with social development. Mm -hmm. It is social development that is accountable to the Constitutional Court. And therefore, if a people uh, run more around uh, the circles, that uh, delays that whole process. And when the court uh, wants uh, answers, it will come to us. Number two, everyone who is working with us must be balanced and neutral. People must not uh, bring their interests in the work we are doing. And the people, we, we are going to work with the post office. And we are prepared uh, to ensure that the post office becomes viable. And we are tired uh, of people asking us the question of a uh, the viability of the post office. Mm -hmm. If they want to ask that question, they must go to the post office. There are strengths of the post office we already know as Sasa, and that is going to be our entry point. We don't want uh, to, push, to push the post office for failure. But one other thing, we want to say to older persons, the cut, the Sasa cut, that one, is going to work mm -hmm. up until the end of this year, end of 2018. Mm -hmm. We have extended uh, its use. So they are not forced to take any other cut besides uh, this one. There is a green cut that uh, they've been uh, getting that is not a social uh, development uh, card or SASA card. It's a bank's card. And that arrangement was not made with us. And uh, we know why uh, that uh, was done. It's because the present uh, people we are working with want to make a profit because it's going to be easy for them. They're just going to transfer our people mm -hmm. and say, we, here we are, we are a bank, so you are going to get uh, your grants uh, from us. We are not a very, we are not illiterate uh, when it comes to the issues of Sasa. We know they are moving uh, before us so that uh, they can make a profit even if they are not uh, in the system. 
So, Minister, with these cars, since they're going to be uh, valid until the end of 2018, will SASA be bringing in new cars for 2019 onwards? Or what is the plan regarding the, the car we system? We are going uh, to work on that. But what we are not going to do is to buy new cars mm -hmm. when uh, they are cars that we can use. And uh, one other thing is that uh, grant uh, beneficiaries must know that uh, if they use a bank card, they are charges. And social development is not responsible for, for those, charges. those charges. They are taken from their money. So I, also that uh, must be very clear hmm. so that uh, at the end of the day, people do not say that uh, we are taking uh, their money. And lastly, no one is allowed to phone grant beneficiaries and tell them to go and apply for an account. That must come within their own decision. So if a grant beneficiary wants to get a grant from the bank, mm -hmm. they must go there. Of their own free will. Yes. They must not be called. And what they must do is to come to SASA offices. And then they will get a form that has to be filled by the bank and will take matters from there. So those that are phoning a grant beneficiaries must stop doing that. Well, Minister, just uh, something that you mentioned over the Christmas season in Nkandla, that local supermarkets may actually be considered as possible pay points. Now, is that something that has been tested or will it be tested? And do you think it's also a viable option? The very uh, fact that there are some of our people that uh, get their money from uh, the big uh, supermarkets says that uh, even a sponsor shop mm -hmm. can do that. There is already a cooperative that we started working with a long ago in the Northwest, and they are doing very well, which means that we must spread uh, the responsibility. We must also give co a bank cooperatives an opportunity, as well as a small banks, rural banks, an opportunity to pay out a uh, beneficiaries. It should not be in one place mm -hmm. and uh, it should not focus on a few big uh, financial uh, institutions. It should go uh, all out so that uh, our people benefit at the end of the day. Well, Minister, we're actually almost out of time, but just lastly in a few minutes on the new ANC leadership, what are your hopes and expectations? Expectations is that uh, we deliver the resolutions of the conference but also, I want uh, to call uh, upon our leadership to take the issues of violence against women and children as very serious. And because this has been going on and on and on. And uh, therefore, we need to all uh, stand up and ensure that uh, our women and our children feel safe in their country.